Hello real estate investors, Sam Hack here with Renter Retirement, here to recap another very interesting week of real estate and economic news. On to the show. First up in big time real estate news, Evergrande, a giant Chinese real estate company, is currently $300 billion in debt and is close to defaulting on its loans. This week, Evergrande was able to make an interest payment on one of its issued bonds. However, they have tons more looming debt coming due soon. This is an important story to follow because in China, real estate makes up 29% of GDP, compared to around 7% in the US. And in China, with very cheap borrowing costs, there's a massive amount of overbuilding happening and vacant housing existing. The collapse of Evergrande could send shockwaves throughout the world economy, so investors and homeowners alike are hoping for a Chinese government bailout. Make sure to stay tuned for more developments in this story. Our next topic is how real estate is making Americans wealthy. And you may say, yeah, well, duh, but let's go in a little deeper. According to the Federal Reserve, Americans' net worth is up 19.6% from last year, accounted for mostly by the crazy stock market run-up and real estate price increases seen in the past year. Both home equity and household debt increased this past year, with average home equity up to almost 68% in April, the highest level since the 2008 financial crisis. These two metrics reflect the fact that rapid appreciation has increased home equity and a higher borrowing rate is now needed to buy a home. Let's touch on new real estate legislation. The budget reconciliation bill that we've talked about in the last few weeks is now in the House Budget Committee and is being reviewed. Some of the interesting new changes in the proposed bill are individual retirement accounts can no longer invest in syndications that are considered securities. IRAs currently holding investments of this type will have to exit these investments by the end of 2023. The bill also includes some new restrictions on the use of conservation easements and when and when they cannot be used. The IRS is being allocated an additional $80 billion to increase auditing ability, so make sure you're crossing your T's and dotting your I's in your books. Lastly, this past week, Fannie Mae released a housing market forecast in which they reported a 2% increase in sales of existing inventory from June to July. However, Fannie Mae is suggesting that things may cool off a bit with current listings at an all-time low and buyers feeling a little priced out of the market at current prices. In economic indicators this week, the latest data that we have from the Bureau of Labor Statistics suggests the U.S. unemployment rate is still at 5.2%. Our average days on market for U.S. listings according to Realtor.com is 39 days. The median home price is $380,000. The average rent for a one-bedroom apartment, according to apartmentguide.com, is $1,636 a month. Our average interest rates for primary residences with ideal credit for 30-year fixed-rate mortgages is at 3%, and for 15-year fixed-rate mortgages, we're at 2.23%. As for investment properties, we're barely peaking over 4% for borrowers with ideal credit and a 20% down payment. I hope you feel a little more updated on the real estate market after this video, both on a global and local scale. Obviously, you can tell that real estate impacts a lot, so it's important to stay educated. You can continue to educate yourself here at Rent to Retirement, or even invest with us by getting in touch with one of our investment counselors using the link in the description below. Give us a shout on any of our social media accounts or my own accounts at Sam H Real Estate. We'd love to interact with you and answer any questions you might have. This has been Sam Hack for Rent to Retirement, and I'll see you all next week.